Hi folks, it's Tim G5TM. Thanks for joining me again. Now, you might recall a couple of months ago, I made a video about a 25 foot, that's about seven and a half meter long vertical doublet uh, attached to a 10 meter pole with some 450 ohm ladder line coming into the, the shack. Um, the antenna itself is about two and a half meters, about seven or eight feet off the ground, basically. And it's done really well on the higher bands, 20 through 10, loads of DX. And I'll do a separate video on that maybe in, in the coming week or two, just to show you how well that antenna has done. Now, the only band I really haven't done so well on is 40 meters, because let's face it, 25 feet is an extremely short antenna on 40 meters. It's about uh, 0 0.19, 0 0.18 of a wavelength. So even well short of being a quarter wave, to be honest with you. Now, with that in mind, I, I'm going to keep the vertical doublet if I can because of the low angle of radiation. I've come across an example of a, a slightly longer, uh, longer doublet even, uh, from a guy called Rick, DJ0IP over in Germany. And as we we'll see here, he's got a, an interesting uh, description of the antenna uh, showing how to, uh, how to construct it. Well, 12 meter poles, so similar to this one. You just wind the antenna wire sort of uh, gently around it, coil it around to fit it onto the pole. And the bottom of the antenna should be around about 50 or 60 centimetres off the ground. So hence the need just to, to curl it slightly around the pole there. You still feed it with 450 ohm. And according to Rick, it does a really good job on 40 and even 80 metres. And my main preoccupation here is 40 metres to see how well it would improve things. By the way, the 25 foot doublet still works on 40, but I know full well it doesn't do so well. So uh, we'll see. The other consideration is I don't want to spoil the higher bands. So would going to a 40 foot long vertical doublet, 12 metres, uh, in any way affect the, the higher bands and maybe make them a bit worse. So it's a real balancing act here, trying to get 40 metres better, but not ruining what's been going on so well for 10, 12 and 15, for example. Let's take a look at, uh, at Rick's design and uh, let's do some comparisons with the, um, with the existing shorter doublet on modelling. Let's take a look. Let's do the comparison band by band. So let's look at 10 metres first of all. And I've got the computer fired up here, as you can see. And uh, let's see what I've got on the screen here. So uh, looking at the far field plot, this is for 10 metres. Now the green is the uh, the 40 foot 12 metre doublet. I'll call it the 40 foot doublet from now on if I may, just for ease of reference. And the, the red is the existing seven and a half metre. That's the 24, 25 foot doublet. Now, as you can see in the low angles, uh, up to about say 15, maybe up to nearly 20 degrees off the horizon, the um, the 40 foot uh, doublet seems to have a slight edge over the existing one, but not by much. If you go down to the bottom, look, if you look halfway across, you've got the, uh, you've got the, um, the column saying GA, and that's the peak gain. So the peak gain for the, uh, the, the 40 foot one in green is 2.7 dB at 11 degrees. And for the existing shorter doublet, it's 1.9 dB at 12 degrees. I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, there's not much in it, is there? But uh, it just shows that uh, at the lower angles, certainly when we're chasing our DX, that the, uh, the the longer doublet doesn't really have a disadvantage. Notice if we look back at the far field plot, however, for the higher angles, say from 30 degrees upwards, clearly there's a little bit more gain or quite a bit more gain actually with the, uh, the existing doublet. But I'll be honest with you, I'm not too concerned about that. I'm looking at 10, 15 degrees or less to shoot for DX down to South America, across the ponds in North America. Uh, VK has even been spotted, excuse me, on 10 meters very recently. So um, this is what we're looking for. So actually, okay on 10 meters. Let's have a look now at uh, 12 meters, shall we? So let's uh, pull that up on the screen here for you. Now, um, here we go. Where are we? Here we go. So 12 meters then. Similar story in a way. Again, don't forget the, the longer doublet is in green, the shorter one is in red. Now, there is a story to be told here, and I'll, I'll draw your attention to that in a minute. But again, if you look at those, look at the far field plot on the right hand side, similar story to 10 meters. The first sort of 15 degrees or so, the, the longer doublet wins. The higher angles of radiation, the shorter doublet wins. Again, going down to the, the column where it says gain, the GA column there. We're about half a dB better off at 12 degrees. Two, at uh, two, sorry, two, um, two dB gain is the peak gain at 12 degrees for the longer doublet. One and a half dB gain at 13 degrees for the shorter one. Now, the only thing that concerns me a little bit, if you go to the left, towards the left hand side of those, uh, those figures at the bottom, you'll find at the, uh, at the impedance and the reactance at the feed point, we've got a bit of an issue. 
For the green one, you see the figure there of uh, just about 2,100 ohms in terms of reactants. Now, that's, that could be an issue. Uh, the reason why that's quite high, uh, and, and, and also the uh, yeah the figure there, 2,280, the reason why those figures are high is because this, effectively, this antenna, the longer antenna, is basically as good as a full wave on 12 metres. So that's the only issue I have with this at the moment, is it's a full wave on 12. Um, and that's going to create, a, could create a challenge for the tuner, but I'll go over that in a minute to see whether the um, the ladder line would bring it down to a manageable uh, impedance for the tuner to deal with. But as it's a full wave, we've got a bit more of a challenge to match there. If you notice, on the red figures underneath the green there are far more manageable at the at the feed point, and in fact, every, the twelve meters is dead easy to bring in as it stands with a shorter doublet. Anyway, we'll see how that goes. Um, let's look now then at uh, 15 meters. Let's let's bring that in. Here we go. Similar story again. Look again at the, the lower angles of radiation there. Again, 15 up to about 10, 15 degrees, the longer doublet winds. Again, the higher angles of radiation, 30, 40, 50 degrees up, the, the shorter doublet winds. And again, if we look down at the gain figures, actually, um, Interestingly enough, the, the shorter doublet has slightly, only very slightly big, better gain uh, at 14 and a half degrees, the, the, the longer one, just under a, a dB at 13.6. No difference really there, to be honest. So again, 15 metres, not really affected too much. And um, again, though, you will notice uh, initially at the feed point, there's, there's a slightly raised uh, reactance there. But uh, I, I think there won't be too much of a problem bringing that in. And we'll look at that in a second. Okay, let's have a look then at uh, 17 metres, comparing them. Same story again, look, very similar. Interestingly enough, there's a bit less of a difference with the higher angles, but I'm not really concerned about that. And go down to the bottom again there, you can see that the, the gain figures are very similar. Uh, the elevation angle of about, about 15 degrees, the gain 0.5.7. So nothing much to worry about there with that. That looks good. And then we'll just look at 20 metres again, uh, I should say now for now. And you can see on the on the far field plot for 20 metres, a very, very similar story with both antennas. They're practically the same. I'm going down peak gain at the elevation angles, practically identical. So 20 metres is basically as it was. Uh, you will notice, however, that the... Um, uh, well, you know, actually, there's not much of a difference there, really. It's slightly better match uh, at the feed point. What the what the uh, lab line will do to that, we'll look at in a minute. But um, basically, practically, an identical antenna to what it is now. So from 10 to 20 metres, barring 12 metres being a full wave, which could be an issue to match, but in terms of the far field plot, nothing to worry about here. So the key question now is, um, what is this going to do for 40 metres? So um, let's compare 40 metres and see whether there's a difference here, shall we? Uh, 40 metres. Now, we're told from an early age, aren't we, that there is two sides to every story. It takes two to tango, etc. Well, one half of the story here is the far field plot for 40. So let's have a look. And, um, well, the game we're playing here is spot the difference. Because as, as you can see from that diagram on the right-hand side, between the red and the green, green being the 40-foot uh, doublet, 12-metre-long doublet, compared to the 7.5-metre-long doublet in red, there is practically hardly any difference at all in gain and hardly any change in terms of the various gain at different angles. So literally, we've got a dead heat, haven't we? So if we just took the far field plot by itself, we'd say, what's the point of us going to, to a longer doublet? But that's not the whole story. Let me show you for a second. So if we now look at uh, what we're basically we're looking at feed line losses, okay? So if I go into uh, another screen for you, here we go. So if we look at the 40-foot the doublet, first of all, if you look at the figures on the right in yellow, not the one on the left, remember, on the right, where it says loss, just to the right of that Smith's chart there, the total loss, mainly through reflected, um, mainly through reflected power, is about 0.7 of a dB, all right? So effectively, we're losing about 0.7 of a dB on the feed line, and given as well the you know the inherent loss within 450 ohm nav line, which is actually nothing. The reflected loss is is 0.7. So we're losing 0.73 according to this of a dB. And I'm using as you can look at towards the top of the screen on the left or halfway halfway up on the left, 
just to the left of that red line, you'll see 34 feet. This, I'm using 34 feet of 450 ohm ladder line. It's even got a velocity factor up there as well, up at the top, 0.91. So that's what we're using. So at the longer dub, for the longer doublet, we're losing about 0.7 of a dB. Now, just to make you aware, for the higher bands, we're losing about 0.2 of a dB, between 0.1 and 0.2 of a dB. So nothing to worry about. 0.7, we can we can live with that, can't we? And there'll be some other losses a little bit in the in the tuner, uh, whatever you use. But you know, we're just looking at this for a minute. So 0.7 of a dB is the calculated loss for 450 ohm ladder line, 34 feet of it with the 40 foot doublet okay on 40 meters or on 7.15 megahertz now let's bear that in mind now if we uh compare that then to the losses on the 25 foot doublet on 40 meters that's a seven and a half meter long doublet this is why we want to go longer because if we now look at this screen cast your eyes down to the bottom right hand side again when we've got that yellowed bit there and we can see we're now actually losing a reflective power about just under 3.6 dB. And the total loss is actually 3.6 dB. We're now losing over half our power. So 100 watts, if you look at power at the load there, at the very bottom in yellow, we're putting out 43 watts. We've effectively lost over half our power. Not great. The reason for that, if you look to the left of the Smith's chart, the yellow bit on the left-hand side, you can see that um, we've had to deal with quite a high uh, reactance there. We might, you know, the, with 34 foot of ladder line, we can bring it down to a tunable, uh, to a tunable level there, no problems at all, under 218 ohms. That's fine for any tuner to deal with. And that's why I can tune this antenna very easily on 40 meters. But of course the feed line has had to deal with a lot of, of reflected loss. We've had a lot of uh, uh, reactance and therefore the antenna itself is pretty inefficient at that length. And the shorter the antenna, yes, we can tune it, but we're dealing with a lot of loss in that situation. And at the end of the day, look, we're losing 3.6 dB. So this is why, if we look at the far field plot, we'd say, no point doing anything. But if we consider uh, the reflected loss we have, uh, especially on, on, on the feed line there, then we have a situation where we have a need really to make this antenna a bit longer. And by the way, at 40 feet or 12 meters, we're only 0.3 of a wavelength. So we're only just over a quarter of wavelength long. But compared to being 0.18 of a wavelength, it's clearly far more beneficial for us to go to a longer uh, doublet at, uh, for, for, for 40 meters, even though it's not really a brilliantly long antenna still on 40 meters. So it all differs, of course, depending on the length of your ladder line as well. There's lots that'll change impedances in different ways. But clearly, with the shorter length of antenna that we've been playing with on 40 metres, we need to make it longer. And the good news is it won't really harm uh, the performance in any way on, on the higher bands, to be honest with you. And will certainly improve the efficiency and give us a bit more to play with uh, on 40 metres. So um, looks like uh, Rick's design certainly can do a job for us on 40 meters. I guess the only other fly in the ointment I mentioned earlier was 12 meters because we're looking now at a full wavelength antenna and full wavelength antennas, uh, if you try to match a full wavelength dipole, can be a challenge for uh, for most tuners. You certainly wouldn't be able to do this with your, with your onboard tuner, <laughs> your onboard ATU and your rig. You'd have to use a very, very good external, uh, probably manual tuner. I think even like the LDG, uh, Z11 Pros would really struggle with this, I think. If you look at the actual chart we've got here, look, this is for 12 meters now. And again, this is the longer doublet. And on the left-hand side, if you look at the left-hand side of, of the Smith chart there, we've got the uh, we've got really what the tune is going to be presented with, with that 34-foot length of 450 ohm ladder line. And we're still being presented with about 1,700 ohms. So you've got to have a good tuner. You've got to have a good tuner. And um, I've got a Kenwood AT230. It's only a manual uh, unbalanced tuner. So it's not brilliant. I've, as, as I showed you before, I've got uh, with, with the, the shorter doublet, I've got a very chunky uh, Ballon design. It's not a cheap one, uh, ATU uh, Ballon, um, which, which is really, really good. Um, plugged directly into the back of the tuner with a two-way 
a double male uh, PL259. Uh, so I'm trying to negate any coax at all. And then the lad line comes into the shack, into that ballon. Um, so it's 1,700 ohms. I, I think, you know, the, the Kenwood might be able to do it, but it's, it's going to be a struggle. Um, so you need to have a really good, good, solid, probably balanced manual tuner to deal with that, uh, which is probably what you should have anyway, to be honest with you. So the only fly in the ointment for me here is 12 meters. Now, if you told me three or four months ago, you might lose 12 meters. I go, yeah, 12 meters. No one's on 12 meters. Well, it's not the case now. 12 meters has come alive. I mean, 10, 12 and 15 have come alive uh, in the last sort of month, really. Um, higher SFI, more sunspots. So to be honest with you, um, losing 12 meters now is not something I really want to do. So that's the only fly in the ointment for me. But Rick does does really stress in his articles and in his, on his excellent website, and I implore you to check it out, by the way, his website. But he does stress the need for what he terms to be a really good matchbox, a really good tuner. And this is a good example of how having a really good tuner would enable you to use this particular doublet, in fact, any doublet, on a on a band that is effectively a full wavelength so there you go um, a good design i think something i can certainly play with i'll uh, i'll probably try it uh, cq worldwide is coming up this weekend so i'm not going to uh, to change chop and change now uh, but i'll certainly give it a try i think in the winter months to see whether i can get 40 meters singing what i will do in the future as well is to experiment and again to pass the model it and see what happens if we make this antenna any longer are we then going to start to impact a great deal on the higher bands? That's something that Rick stresses would happen, especially on sort of 10 and 12 metres. Uh, bands that we don't really now want to mess up, of course, with the SFI uh, increasing as it is. So that is something to focus on and probably a, a subject of a future video. But thanks for watching. Hope this has been of interest to you. And if you've uh, liked what you've seen, then don't forget to click subscribe. And uh, thanks again for watching 73 and stay safe. All the best. Bye-bye.